thank you for joining. Shruti ma'am, you can start. Hi, everyone. Um, a quick introduction. Um, my name is Shruti Gupta. I am currently um, in US. I'm, uh, I'm studying actual like all of you. I recently became an associate from the Society of Actuaries, and uh, I'm working with KPMG US at the moment. Um, it's a consulting firm, new gig, been there for almost a year. Uh, I have previously worked with Prudential again in US and in AIA Australia, which is based in Melbourne in Australia. And uh, yeah, I wanted to share a little bit about how I started with my actuarial career. I did my bachelor's and master's in math because I was a geek. I don't know if a lot of you can relate to that, but I was a math geek and I loved doing just math and something about computer science. And I ended up doing maths uh, for my bachelor's and master's. And then when I went to Australia, I was like, I cannot do anything with my math other than teaching. So I taught at Monash University, I taught engineering math and one of the actual subjects, which is MLC, um, CD5, the life contingency subject. And it was an amazing experience teaching because it taught me a different side of uh, a working culture because where you can actually impact your pro have an impact on the students and your next generation, basically. Um, after that, uh, I started taking exams with IFOA UK. Um, well, actually, uh, I started taking exams with the Australian Institute, Australian Actuarial Institute, uh, which is affiliated with IFOA UK. So all my exams, struck, my start exams were CT exams, the CT series, and I started taking exams there. And I was there in Australia for about six years, moved to US in 2012 or something, 2014. And once I moved to US, um, I started looking for job opportunities. And the biggest roadblock was they considered me, even though I had about three years of experience with about four or five exams done, they considered me a student, uh, which was okay, but then, uh, I hit a roadblock where they only wanted SOA recognized exams because they do not, U US employers here, not employers, I should say, recruiters here do not understand IFOA exams. So I had to choose between SOA and another institute, CS, which not many of you have heard about. I will go into CS a little bit in detail just to explain you what that is. But um, I got my exemptions from SOA. Um, and the reasoning I chose SOA was because I was a life actuary and uh, not a PNC actuary. So property and casualty is CAS and SOA is life, health, and uh, anything that's not property and casualty. So where I started, I got my exemptions for my IFO exams with SOA. Um, once I got some exams on my resume that the recruiters could understand, I started getting interviews and I landed up my first role with Prudential, which was uh, a product that I never heard. It is called long-term care. It was very interesting. Um, and since then I've been doing annuities, things that you know, everyone's heard. I've done modeling in annuities. Um, I've done, uh, I've worked on uh, profit and uh, GGY access and some of the other softwares. But yeah, overall, it's been a crazy, honestly, 16 year journey, if I count my uh, teaching. And I did a little bit of stock trading kind of job in India. Uh, that was a cool stint. Uh, so over, overall, I've worked for almost 16 years and it's it's been quite a journey. So I'm pretty excited here, uh, sitting here talk, talking to you about to talk to you about um, a very similar journey that you all are going through. And please feel free to uh, stop me, ask questions. Uh, today's session is uh, uh, for 45 minutes to an hour uh, because I have a hard stop in an hour. Uh, 
but yeah, um, keep, um, Praveen sir can share my details. Feel free to contact me, ask questions, be curious. That's the best part about being an actuary. So from here on, Praveen sir, do you have anything to say or we can get started? Uh, yes, ma'am. First thing is uh, welcome. And uh, since uh, we are talking this uh, since a very long time that we need to discuss the route for the students in the SOA Institute as well. Like my objective of the uh, webinar today is basically they should know about the Society of Actuaries and uh, some of the myths like uh, how does the exam structure look like, whether it is easy, it is difficult and how can they start their uh, journey with SOA if they want to. So basically that option will also be open to my students. So this is the main uh, objective. Yeah, sounds great. Absolutely. And I'm really uh, sorry please... to interrupt. Can you please uh, be a bit louder? Oh, uh, am I not audible enough? No, you, you're audible, but just a little bit more louder. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm too loud. My husband in the other room, he'll be like, we're working from home. He'll be like, you're too loud. Quiet down. So I can be as loud as yeah anyone wants. I'm Indian. What are you talking about? Okay, so what is Society of Actuaries? Uh, Praveen, sir, have you shared the pdf with all the students so they know or uh, it's just of, for us i i mean i could go over and then you yeah, can share if, the if you can the share the uh, thing like what is soa yeah absolutely yeah. so society of actuaries is basically a non-profit and it uh, is based in chicago here in us and um it is one of the institutes it's an actual body that governs all of the life and health exams. And not just exams, we as students only think of exams. It's research, it's, um, it's education uh, for professionals, it's creating, um, helping create standards, code of conduct, ethics. There are so many things that the Institute does for the students and eventually the members of the organization. Um, the other institute that I talked about, CAS, is for property and casualty. Um, I'm not sure if I want to talk about it right now because a lot of you, I should talk about it. A lot of me personally, I only knew about SOA back in Australia. I did not even know there was an institute called CAS. So it's important to know the difference between the two. I can go on about SOA because that's what this presentation is about. And we can talk about CAS in another session. The main difference, as I told you before, was this: the ultimate um, speciality you want to choose. So if you want to choose uh, health and uh, home insurance. You want to work for car insurance, auto insurance, car insurance, uh, health, home, car, and there are other insurances. Just you know your rental insurances and all of those. If you want to work on that line, which is an, a great field in itself as well, it's insurance. Uh, then it's SOA is not the way to go. You should go with CAS. But this is more for life and health, which I am an expert on. Um, so the countries that SOA recognizes are, uh, it says mainly US and Canada, but that's not true. Uh, I would say SOA recognizes, it should be the other way around. Students who have studied from SOA, their, their education is recognized all over the world, whether it be India, China, Australia, UK, well, US, obviously, Canada. Uh, I do not know about South America, but there is a growing presence of SOA in South America that I know about. So it is more of a global education that you get, whereas um, with other institutes like with when i was with uh australian institute i'll talk about my example uh so when i was with australian institute the only if i became an associate with uh, australian institute 
I would have given the title AIA, which is associate from the Institute of Australia. And then if I would have taken a, a specialty line uh, within Australia, I would have to take exams focused on the Australian market. That is how the uh, prelims are same throughout. Up to part one, part two, it's same throughout. It's part three where all the difference is. So if I would have studied in Australia, the same applicability wouldn't have been too much in maybe say UK or um, I think in China you can't even be employed if you have you have to have SOA. They do not recognize I, uh, the Australian Institute. And well, if I would have come to US, it would have been different again. Um, so, so I want to know, sir. Do I talk about the exam structure the way it's given in the notes? Yes, the exam structure and like my my uh, relevant query to you will be that. Uh, currently in India, you see uh, the recruiters they they actively hire IA and IFO students. I'll be direct. So, uh -huh. what according to you should be the roadmap and. Uh, like why should the student consider the SOA Institute? Like what's different? Uh, so if you can talk a little bit about the exam structure and the frequency, uh, some fees so that the students get a clear idea. Absolutely. So a lot of things. Um, I wouldn't say choose a specific institute because there are many factors when you choose an institute. What, um, where are you located? Um, to be very honest, as a student, for me to take the exams in Australia was not easy. Uh, IFO exams are expensive. Uh, and in Australia, they were actually, IFO exams are not as expensive as Australian Institute because there are very less students. So I had to pay, not kidding, more than $1,500 for an exam. And it was a lot. And that does not include study material. That was separate. Oh. I think so, yeah. And my study material used to come from somewhere in Australia itself, but if I would have ordered from UK, it was different priced. But the point is, I cannot help you uh, say that this is the best institute for you, choose that. I would give you the pros and cons, and it's up to you to decide. I can help you decide, but I won't decide it for you. So the reason, uh, SOA is a good way to start if you're in life or health is because it gives you a global platform at the end of the day. It there is. I'm working in a US firm, so I know uh, US market, so I know that uh, there is a lot of interest of US employers to come to India to outsource for the actual services. It has already started in my previous job in Prudential. We had outsourced to um, uh ey and uh we recruited a lot of indian actuaries and college pass outs so it wasn't like oh they had like 20 years of experience and then only you get to work no literally college pass outs they were like three or four years into the market and yes they were studying for uh, for uh from either ifoa or the indian institute but if you already have SOA credentials, if you already have not SOA, US credentials, then it gives you an edge over the rest of the kids who are studying the same thing in India. It's all about how do you put yourself um, a little differently when you're presenting your resume for your job, say, for example. It helps you when, when a recruiter can see, OK, you have on a certain number of exams, but then when you start working on a project and your manager or your team gets to know that you're also recognized with SOA and you understand it, if they do get an opportunity to get, you know, outsourcing opportunities or, um, you know, any partnership opportunities with a U.S. firm, you're already there. You have already crossed, you have already, uh, you know, cross the first hurdle of being recognized as an actuary in United States. So that I would say is one of the biggest hurdles uh, uh, that US recruiters do not understand IFOA. And at the moment, Indian, 
recruiters, as Provincia said, do not recognize SOA. So it's about that balance that you create uh, when you're studying. So SOA exams can sound that they are very simple, but we ha you have to understand, for me, it was not simple. The reason being, they were multiple choice. I'm not good at multiple choice. CT7, uh, the economics paper, they started with 25 multiple choice, and you have to pass like 17 before they even start grading your um, written part, 20 or 25. And I think the written part, I did it in like half the time, but then the multiple choice was where I was sweating. So multiple choice is not the way I've studied, not because it's tough. I'm not saying it's tough. It's because I have, since I was in third grade in class three, I've been taking written exams, half yearlies and finals, written exams, rigorous exams, where I can explain, I can say, oh, I did this, 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 even if though my answer is not right, my, I will tell you exactly what I've done and I will get mocks. Because if you see IFO exams, they have, if you write the formula, you get half a mark. If you explain it, you get one mark. If you do something else, you get two marks. And you know, that's what my strategy was, but that failed with SOA because I tried to do multiple choice. Multiple choice is right or wrong. They do not care what method you used, whether you guessed, whether you did it correctly, whether you were almost correct. As long as you're not correct, you failed. So I struggled with initially with SOA. I eventually started understanding it, but it took me a lot harder. So you I won't say SOA is the way to go. It's the easiest exams in the world. No, um, everything needs practice. Everything needs a structure, which I honestly, I did not create because I started SOA exams with the notion they're very easy because that's what everyone told me. Oh, SOA exams, they're the easiest. Oh, you know, you just go, you take them and we passed in like one go. Um, so, one of the things that Sir has mentioned about SOA exams is that the exam results for some of the exams, online exams, where it's multiple choice, you get a pre, um, kind of pre exam score, not exam score, you get a pre result that says whether you've cleared or not. That doesn't mean you have passed or have failed, but there is a high probability that they won't find any mistakes in uh the pre-check and you have passed so that is a good way to kind of celebrate not celebrate but kind of get that satisfaction and not wait for three months or four months to get your results and you don't know whether you have to start studying for the same exam or you have to start studying for the next exam so if the soa route is for you it is very it becomes very easy and quick to finish your exams. Yet, if you fail, then you also know that you have to start studying very quickly. Like if you, if within an hour, yes, it's very disheartening that literally within an hour or That's within, it. I think within a minute you get, I think it's not even an hour, it's instant uh, pre-assessment uh, that you get to know whether you've passed or failed. It's, it's a lot to deal with, uh, but, at least you know what your direction is after you take a small break. Okay, um, exam structure. There are, uh, so in Australia, they're called prelims, VEEs. And, um, and then so, uh, there is an exam that was added. So prelims are basically, so it's not given here. Let me, I have that, um, give me one second. I can send the details. So prelims are basically the probability, financial math. Um, IFM has been removed. Uh, there is something, there is uh, actual mathematics, uh, statistics for risk modeling. So and there are three BE exams for economics, accounting, and finance. And there's one more, we're missing one in the notes. Um, and there is a new exam added, which is uh, predictive analytics. Uh, it used to use R, 
uh, but um, for last sitting onwards, they're not using R anymore. You only get snippets of R, which I feel is very bad of SOA to remove. But anyway, it's uh, it's a predictive analytics uh, exam. Really, really interesting. Uh, the, I'm sorry the... to interrupt. Like, can you please uh, tell yeah. us, like, if we talk till associateship, right? Yeah. So, uh, what are the exams and what is the content? Little bit, if you can just uh, throw some light on. Um, to be honest, I do not remember all of it. <laughs> it's very, very similar to um, IFOA. So I can provide some sort of a guide that I can find. But um, for example, SO is changing their structure very, very quickly. So okay. for example, the CM2, which, is, which was CT8, mm -hmm. is no longer a prelim exam. So um, there, there are a lot of changes. So it's hard for even I have recently become an associate and I'm already not in touch with what the recent changes were. So that's how fast SO is changing. And it's not because they're changing it to make it difficult for the students. In fact, they're making it easier for the students to enter because uh, they want to see a lot of students um, not be scared of the exam process to enter the industry yet at the same time create like a nice pipeline for the next generation actuaries because um there is a shift from the mindset that after associateship i don't want to do fellowship they want to tr they are trying to break that barrier that why is that happening and helping students uh get asa fairly easily and then make FSA a little bit harder. They have to make it because it's it's the nature of our. Because if they make it super easy, then everyone's an actuary, and this is no longer a niche uh, field where you get so many perks. Well, perks like job security, um, amazing salary, amazing bonuses. These are perks you get because it's a niche field, and not everyone's doing it. Um, one of the things that I found with SOA that I really liked was part two. I have not done part two in Australia, but I've only heard. So I don't know, I cannot make any comparisons. I've heard that part two is extremely difficult. Uh, well, in Australia, you also have to attend uh, one of the universities, Melbourne Uni or Macquarie to complete the course, uh, complete part two. But in SOA, it is a different structure. The structure is to do modules. And they have actually reduced the modules from eight to five, I think. Yes. And they used to have two very crazy assessments. And they have reduced that also to one. So they are, again, helping students achieve their ASA so that once you're in an associate from the Society of Actuaries, that is when you become a member of the Society of Actuaries. So until then, you're considered a candidate, not a member. So that is one of the big difference. So I do not want to go into the exams because to be honest, I'll get lost and there's, uh, there's, there's too many exams. Um, I can uh, talk a little bit about studying. Uh, I can talk about fee structure actually. So one of the things is fees, which is a big deal for a lot of students. And we, um, I struggled. It was not easy to pay a thousand plus dollars plus uh, ex exorbitant amount when I was taking um, uh, for the study material. And especially if you fail, then you have to get like some sort of of course I failed. Um, uh, some sort of like revised material, which is at a lower cost, but it still costs you. So uh, cost is a huge thing. So study hard, you fail, that's absolutely fine. But study hard, like literally, the way Praveen sir teaches, I'm not promoting him to be honest, but the way he teaches, the way he um, 
guides students before the exam is actually very, very inspiring. And Sir knows I sometimes do study from him. And sometimes I was like, oh, I'll study. Whenever you slack off, you know it. No one has to tell you. Praveen Sir won't tell you you're slacking off. You think he won't tell you, but he will. <laughs> I think, you know, that's the part about being a great teacher that, you know, he needs to tell you, stop, stop thinking. I, oh, I remember seeing some of your, I forgot that app. Oh, I don't use that app anymore. Um, uh, it's, it's the app that, it's WhatsApp, but another one in India. What do we use? Telegram, Stop. Telegram. Telegram. Oh <laughs> my God, your videos before the exam. I was like, I am so glad I'm not a full-time student uh, because it brought me back to those days where, you know, literally my mom used to be like, to my brother, not to me. I was a good student, kidding. But uh, my mom and dad used to give us that, you know, huge thing that forget about everything and study and if Praveen sir is doing that for you, believe me, and not your parents, you're very, very lucky. Because if parents do that, it's not fun. So it's having like a cool teacher do that for you, listen to him, study, 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 study. I have studied after getting married. That's when I started my actual career. I have taken my exams when I was pregnant with both my kids. I studied while working. I studied while changing uh, moving from Australia to US. I have studied throughout my life. My daughter's 10 now, and I've just cleared ASA. So I've just become ASA. So studying with your parents and a teacher on top of you saying that, please study, it is the best scenario. I would die for it. So being in that scenario where you just have parents taking care of you and i have another um girl i met uh in new york the other day she was visiting from india and i told her the same thing that when you study your parents take extra care of you they treat you like a prince or a princess they you do not need to get up you don't need to do dishes you don't need to uh put away your clothes anywhere you they will literally sit and feed you food because that's the way parents are they will pamper you to the last limit if you can study and studying when you just have to study is quite boring but believe me it's the easiest thing to do studying with a family uh with a husband so with an extended family, I mean, uh, studying with kids, studying when you're working is not fun. Yes, employers will pay, pay for your study material and your exams, but think about it. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll be working almost 9 to 12 hours for that little amount that you're thinking your employers will pay. They're going to take all the worth out of that little money that they're paying for your exams. And study leaves are very, very um, well um, laid out for students, at least in Australia and US, but not with every employer. Employers have an expectation, as long as my work gets done, you can take study leave. That's the common th theme. So you are at no longer that luxury that you you know, the employers will be sitting right next to you and helping you do your work while you can study. No, you'll have to do two things at the same time, study and work. So as long as you're a student only studying, even if you're doing a college course, just listen to Praveen sir. I will let him do the talking on all of that because I loved his videos. I really did. They inspired me. And I was like, I'll keep them for my kids. I'll remember, I'll revise them for my kids. Okay. Going back to the exams, the exams are uh, a couple of times a year. So it's, even though it's online, it's not like you can take every three months or so. Uh, there, are, there are some exams that are um, every two months, P and FM. And there are some exams which are two or three times a year. For, for example, predictive analytics, ML, um, the LTAMs and STAMs which are again changed a little bit um, for associateship. 
um, I talked about the prelim exam. Oh, does anyone have a question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, ma'am, my uh, question for you is uh, that uh, mm -hmm. for associateship, there are six exams to clear. There are uh, three VEEs, like yes. uh, it's for. So, VEEs can be compared to like CV level exam in IFO, right? the cb1 like it's the accounting and finance and economics paper so uh, and there are some yeah and there are some uh online modules to cover right so when you compare it with other uh, with, uh, with other institutions so what according to you should be the roadmap like as you mentioned that best part is that uh some of the exams are uh happening more than uh, twice a year right mm -hmm. the initial exams and some of the exams are happening twice a year so uh, as per your understanding you're having the know so what should be the roadmap so that if a student plans to uh, start with SOA so mm -hmm. either they're going to start with P or FM right so what should be the roadmap and how much time does it take to prepare for any exam like in terms of hours if you can just guide us a little bit Absolutely. So um, with the PE and FM, they are like CT1 and CT3. If I'm not wrong, I'm still in the CT series. I'm sorry, guys. I've still not gotten used to the CM, CN, C, uh, CM and all of those. So um, for most of the prelims, um, the hours actually have changed so like for example fm uh, is a three hour exam with 35 multiple choice questions so if it's three hours and uh 35 multiple choice you kind of divide how many minutes you need for it but an average timeline is three months that's again th this is something i can research more but that's how i study i study for three months which is like rigorous studying, I should back up. Three months is just studying. It's not three months before the exam. And uh, one month is purely, one-ish month is purely revision. Um, the, it's just about practicing multiple choice. And uh, that is, uh, there is, um, a website that I used. I am blanking out. I'm sorry because I don't have my notes with me. Uh, there is a website, um, and I can share that with Sir. So all you have to do is keep on practicing multiple choice. And what they do is, oh, I see a question. Uh, what uh, what I uh, what you do is you start to get better. And if you start getting, I didn't talk about scoring. So the scoring is from zero to ten. Uh, zero means you have not prepared. You just went in to take the exam. Zero is a score. I have gotten it because I literally took an exam because I wanted to know what SOA is and what the hype is. And uh, it was okay. It, it was just some money that I spent. Big deal. But um, I wanted to get an experience of an, a multiple choice exam trying to understand it because I'd never taken a multiple choice, a pure multiple choice um exam in my life so it was an a practice exam kind of thing so uh there's zero and then there one zero to five is fail six and above is pass so the way i take it as about uh i won't say 60 percent plus is pass i would give six a rating about 70 to 75 percent the reason being uh, why I'm not doing it a one-to-one -one scale from 0 to 100 and 0 to 10 is because, well, 100% to 10 is because when you aim for 60, you get 50. When you aim for 50, you get 40. You do not, in the exam, you do not get 100% of what you've prepared. You always examiner, like it's multiple choice, but then even multiple choice, you will be doing guessing at the end of it. 35 questions sounds easy in three hours. It's a lot sometimes because there are rigorous calculations that you have to keep doing. So, uh, and there's a cool way to do that as well, but that's another story. Um, 
so with the the multiple choice i would say three months to study the course material and one month to just practice it multiple choice after multiple choice like as many multiple choice that you can practice you need to do that to be able to get a uh, question to you like you are saying three months to prepare now some of the students uh in india they do unitary method calculations so the students might be of the opinion like me that uh, it takes three months and since the exams are held multiple times so in a year if we are taking three exams so roughly it will take uh two 2.5 years to complete all these six exams and since there is a uh, notification that there is no examination for vee exams yeah. they they just need to uh, basically take it from a prep provider who is the official prep provider is that correct so with the ves that's a great question i uh got the exemption for ves because i had taken some of the cg series exams so you get exemptions for the exams that you take with ifoa um, hmm. I do not know if you are in India, how do you do VEs if you're not taking the IFO exams? That's a great question. I can ask someone in SOA uh, to about it because I do not know how do students okay. not in US uh, so, ma'am, is, uh, so, ma is it true that uh, in maybe three years the student can plan for asa like uh, once they start because six exams plus some online learning modules and what is the toughness of the online learning modules like is it very easy to go uh, or what is that one thing i would say about modules because it's at your own pace you can literally sit in a group of a hundred and do the modules do not do not however much you're attempted or tempted to cheat please do not cheat the on the modules because once you start to get that black mark it will get very difficult to remove that uh from the soa institute it's pretty much a black dot on your career discuss discuss everything i think final assessment you cannot discuss but discuss everything possible the final submission has to be your own words however amazing however bad you see your neighbor your the students right next to you being like oh she's written like 500 pages and she's done so amazing or he is sitting on my left hand side and he's done so much better and his wordings are so much better mm -mm -mm doesn't mean they'll pass and doesn't mean you'll fail you are not the examiner you cannot assess anyone's uh, assignment you do your assignment discuss everything but write it in your own words the plagiarism policy is very very strict with soa do not take it lightly and um, okay are we open book like IFOA? Again, these are uh, college courses. They're not exams. Uh, from what I know, I haven't taken VEs here. I can, and as I said, I do not know if VEs are offered in any of the institute in India. That's a good question. I have someone yeah, in One SOA. more uh, session, since it's a hard stop for you, one more session we can plan. Yeah in that uh, we can discuss the examination structure with timing and fees in detail can we do that absolutely i would say even before exam and exam structure go on the website the soa website it's soa.org and i would not discourage you from going to cs.org go go uh, go on the website and see what the material is you'll be very very surprised it's very similar you have to know the reasoning why you're going to soa the reason why i went to soa was because i wanted to be relevant to the employers i'm working for i want to be relevant in my career 
I want to be relevant in. If you, if I uh, am working, it's it's like if I go to IIT and I say uh, I I did my bio, I took took my bio entrance. Can I get admitted into IIT? I IIT, unless they ha recognize your, I'm just saying that you you cannot you can study well you can study entirely from indian institute i'm not i'm not 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 uh comparing anything i'm just talking about my experience i'm not promoting soa i am not discouraging you from picking i uh, in indian institute exams or ifo exams i'm just helping you understand that soa is not as scary as you think it's very easy to get your foot in the door with SOA where you can, I am pretty sure you can. Someone recently told me you cannot get exemptions from IFOA to SOA, which I feel is wrong. If you have taken an IF Indian Institute and SOA are not uh, um, re mutually recognized for the prelim exams, they are at the fellowship level. Once you're a fellow, they are mutually recognized. So if you're a fellow from the Indian Institute uh, or the Australian Institute or the UK Institute, you are mutually recognized as a fellow from the Society of Actuaries. Mutually recognition does not give you the knowledge. And that is why I plan I decided to switch from IFOA to SOA. That if I do, whenever I do pursue my specialist exams, I do not know when, uh, but whenever I do. I know I'm going to get relevant information. The re word relevant is very, very important. If you study something that's what's going, if you study Indian politics and you come to US, you will have no idea. If you start talking about Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha in US, they'll be like, we have no idea what you're talking about. It's literally that. It's politics at the end of the day. It's the same thing, but the terminologies can be different. So, with SOA, there is uh, for India, um, there is a um, reduced fee from what I remember. Uh, I haven't researched that recently. That was something I researched because I was from Australia. I was like, ah, can I get some reduced fee? <laughs> because uh, it wasn't for Australia. It was for definitely for India and a lot of other countries. They support a lot of countries where uh, they recognize the students are there, they want to study, and um, that monetary help will help them achieve their education, and that is not a barrier. Money is not a barrier to the entry to the profession. Um, having said that, um, we have an, I am a co-founder of an organization called SANA, South Asian Network of Actuaries. And we are also trying to sponsor students uh, for exams. We haven't started it yet. We are still in a pilot program. So if there is any student and never feel bad about your situation again, that, oh, the person sitting right next to me uh, has an iPhone, I have, a third generation phone, you know, that is passed on from my grandfather, which is like, it's this long. It does not matter. As a student, clothes, your phones, your anything that relates to your parents' money should not matter. Anything that should matter is how hard you're studying, how, um, how much are you dedicated, to what you are doing. And if money is a barrier to entry, that is why we, I, that is why basically I created Sana with my friend because it was, we, I literally was lonely. For me, it was loneliness. I did not know a single Indian actuary. Well, I knew one and he was like in his own world, but I did not have a single actually a South Asian actually whom I could recognize with, whom I could talk to, whom I could talk to in Hindi probably. And I felt lonely and I was like, this is not done. I came to US, same story. 
until I met with who was kind of like my first interviewer, uh, Indian interviewer who was at a managerial level and she inspired me so much. And for me, it was loneliness. For some, it can be opportunity. Maybe your parents don't want you to study. For some people, it may be you're just studying because you know your parents expect you to study. Uh, for some, it may be you know ki yar sab kar rahe, main bhi kar leti hu types. You know, it's you and again for some people it can be money. So there's that that is where Sana is trying to create a program where we can help students. Uh, so if you do need help, please, 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 uh, I will send you my Sana email, not my personal email. I would uh, like you to send us an email and just we can talk about it. There is no judgment. If someone would have judged my loneliness, I would have cried because no one understood how annoying it is to be the only person you know from your background who's studying and has no support. I saw 60 students join. Right now, there are 51 people on this call. This is your village. Hold on to it. Hold on to each other, not for anything else, but helping each other get to the next step. To study, just study. It's the only thing you can do as a student. And believe me, you're very, very lucky that you can just study. And we will try and help. Provinsa will try and help in whatever way we can. OK, that was a little bit emotional. <laughs> Sorry that I deviated. Um, there is a notion that SOA exams are easy. I've talked about it. It can be easy if you study hard. Everything's easy when you study hard. Uh, there came a point, honestly, in my career where I didn't want to study hard because I was too tired, because I had like two kids to take care of and take care of a lot of things. Uh, my social life, my work-life balance, it, it's not easy when your kid just comes up to me and says, I haven't seen you for two weeks. Can we please play? And you have to say no. It's the hardest thing to do to tell your five-year-old that you can't play with them because you're studying for the next two weeks because it's just before the exam and you cannot. I haven't seen my kids grow up, to be honest. Uh, there have been summers. I have not seen them for more than 10 days in a day. It can sound really awesome, but believe me, it's not. <laughs> yep, uh, kids are a handful, but they are, they are who they are. Okay, micro credentials. This is something, sir, I do not know about. Is this may be something new? I have to research it before I give students any information on it. Um, Ma'am, we can plan one more session like in yes, the next week please. so that we get time for research and get all the updated facts uh, so the students are benefited. Yes. So there are eight minutes left. I have to drop definitely within the next seven minutes. I have a meeting. Um, are there any questions? I'll put myself on mute so you guys can talk. Anyone who would like to ask any question? Okay, so ma'am, that's it for today, and uh, we can connect one more day in the next week, uh, so that it's a continuation. It's like a series.